Okay. Thank you for joining this evening. We're going to get started in a moment. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take the opportunity um, to introduce ourselves. Uh, my colleague, Brett Snyder, um, is the admissions coordinator for the Medical Radiation Sciences Program at the University of Toronto. And my name is Karen Roscoe, and I'm the manager of student enrollment uh, here at the Michener Institute. Uh, so the format of the webinar we're going to be sharing with you this afternoon. Um, we'll start off with a very short admissions presentation, which you should be able to see on your screen at the moment. Um, we're hoping that many of the questions that you may have will be addressed at, throughout or by the end of this admissions presentation. Um, so we do ask that you not type in uh, any particular questions that you have until we've gone through the Prezi with you, um, because I'm hoping that they'll be answered there. So, Brett, are you ready? Yeah, of course. Let's go. Okay, we'll get started. Whoops. Okay. So, uh, first question that many of you on the phone might have um, is how to actually apply to one of our 10 full-time programs. Um, there are two different and very distinct uh, processes for applying um, we are very focused on the medical radiation sciences programs here this afternoon. Um, and should you wish to apply to one of these three programs, um, you must do so by applying through Ontario University's application site. Mm -hmm. uh, the link is on the screen right now in front of you. And the deadline to apply is February the 1st, 2018. If anyone is in the audience this afternoon who is interested in applying uh, perhaps to another program in addition to medical radiation sciences, uh, those applications for the Michener standalone programs do have to go through a different um, application website, and that is ontariocolleges.ca. Uh, the two distinct sites do not uh, share information with one another. So if you do have admissions documents that you need to supply for both applications, you must send them to both uh, either institutions, to U of T and Michener, or upload them onto the Ontario Colleges or UAC website. Yeah, and just to confirm, so for the Ontario University's Application Center, those would be um, applicants that are applying to the Medical Radiation Sciences Program um, would use that site. and. That program entails radiation therapy, radiological technology, and nuclear medicine. So if you're applying to one of those three, you'll apply through the Ontario University's Application Center. Uh, you can apply to one of those three, um, and then you can also, in addition to that, apply to one or more Michener programs, right? Great. Yeah. Oops, we just... All right. Okay. After your application is received by uh, Michener or by the University of Toronto, an acknowledgement email with a very uh, unique student portal login, password and ID will be emailed to you. Uh, at this point, I also like to reiterate that you add uh, utoronto.ca as a trusted sender and michener.ca as a trusted center in your uh, email tools so that our uh, important communications going forward don't end up in your spam or in your junk folder. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Brett would agree that email is our preferred and uh, first method of communication with our applicants. Um, so please ensure that um, you're set up to receive our emails um, because many of them are dependent upon deadlines or receive very detailed instructions on uh, what to do next. Yeah, and also to watch that uh, portal. So once you've been granted access to the portal, uh, you know, if additional documents are required or if there's uh, updates to your application status, uh, that's where you will be able to see those changes. So keep an eye on the portal and certainly do watch your inbox for uh, mail from both institutions. Third. Um, you must complete a supplemental application and pay an accompanying fee. The fee this year is $45. Uh, I just want to um, emphasize that the $45 fee is very separate from whatever application fees that you are required to pay on UAC and or Ontario Colleges. And it is required to, uh, for a Michener application for you to actually have your application assessed by one of our admissions staff 
um, and have the fee received. Yeah, so there's two uh, things that I would like to add. Uh, one would be that, uh, uh, or first, if you're applying to medical radiation sciences, you'll actually receive the supplemental application uh, later. Um, Michener applicants will receive access to the supplemental application as the applications are acknowledged, That's if I'm right. correct. Um, MRS applicants will actually receive it in early January, and um, it will be forwarded to you from Michener. So Michener will send you an email with that information, uh, I believe it's the, tw the week of the 26th of January. Um, so a little bit of a different process. If you're applying to both um, types of programs, so you're applying to an MRS program and one or more Michener programs, you only need to complete one supplementary application form and submit one fee. So if you are applying to a Michener program and an MRS program, uh, you will be given access to the uh, SAF uh, with your acknowledgement um, related to your Michener application. You can go ahead and complete that SAF and submit the fee and then Karen's office will be in touch with my office a little later in the process and uh, if you've paid Michener, uh, you won't need to do that again or complete the form again. It sounds a little complicated um, so uh, we're going to move ahead but if you do have specific questions about it at the end of the presentation we'll be happy to. Yeah and I just had one more one more thought about yep. the supplement application um, and that's maybe we could talk a little bit about what that involves mm -hmm. because oftentimes um, you know applicants will expect that this application will include different things than it does. So do you want to talk about it a little yep. bit or do you want me to? Uh, sure, I can start yeah, and perfect. you can uh, let me know some things I might be forgetting. <laughs> um, so mainly this supplemental application is not a traditional graduate school application. Um, there's no essay writing, it's not a portfolio of what you've done and uh, your accomplishments to date. It really is an outline of what it means to be a student in one of our programs. Um, some of the student rights and responsibilities some of our unique requirements that are related to healthcare programs um, because you will be accessing clinical sites uh, at some point in your program um, and those require health requirements, vulnerable persons check with your local police department. So the requirements of our program are very non-traditional for those of you that have already experienced your undergrad um, degree with a, a university in Ontario or outside of Ontario. Um, also, it's it's kind of like the last barrier, or not barrier, but that last step to me to make sure that you do meet all the admission requirements to the program of your choice um, before you kind of invest any more time or any more money in moving forward in our admissions process. It does ask you to go back and look over our admission requirements to ensure that you meet all the academic criteria we're looking for. Um, or to even contact us with any questions that filling out this application um, may bring up for you and to get them addressed before you commit um, a lot of money and uh, three or four years of your life completing one of our programs. Yeah, and so the form of the um, supplemental application is essentially a checklist, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So you uh, check that you agree or are aware uh, of unique um, components and requirements of the program and then once you've agreed and um, you've checked all those boxes then you will submit it and and that's what the SAF includes. Right. Right. Great. Okay. Fourth, uh, any sub supporting documents that you need to submit um, to support your application such as transcripts, uh, resumes, supplemental checklists, um, English facility? English language facility um, credentials or test results. Um, and for Michener programs specifically here, any type of international credential evaluations. Um, so we do have a very separate deadline. We're giving you an extra eight days after the application deadline at Michener to submit those documents. And if you're applying to one of the three radiation sciences programs um, that Brett mentioned earlier, you actually have until February the 15th. Yeah, and uh, I think we would recommend the sooner the better Absolutely. Uh, because we can begin uh, looking at your documents and, um, um, and, you know, it's not wisely things to the very last minute, but you do have a, up until that time to mm -hmm. submit those documents. Um, how to submit them? Most people uh, upload their documents. I would say the number one choice is to their application site uh, account. Mm -hmm. um, we can access them from there. Um, 
there is also the option of bringing things in in person um, to our main offices in uh, either at U of T or at Michener. Um, it's not the preferred method. Many people don't live close enough to do that, but there is also um, the mail. You can uh, have transcripts sent by mail and we will add them to your file should we receive them that way. Yeah, and for U of T we do prefer electronic submission. So if you are um, in Ontario and you've studied in Ontario, your university should be able to provide your electronic transcript directly to the university and you can make that request from within their within the OUAC application. Um, we would uh, require that you submit documents that um, include your studies up until, um, well results up until the end of the current semester by the application deadline and then mm -hmm. follow up with um, final transcripts if you have courses uh, still underway in the winter semester. Mm -hmm. um, if you're unable to send the documents electronically for U of T, we would prefer that you upload a copy of your transcripts into our system so that we can begin our assessment. And then if we require uh, official documents, we'll be in touch with you uh, when that's required. Great. Okay, so... Oh, let's go this way. Oops. All right. Required supporting documents. Um, we require that if you have gone to post-secondary education, um, whether it be for one semester um, for MRS, one year is the minimum that's required, and uh, right up to completing a degree. Perhaps some of you have even gone on to do a master's degree or parts of uh, graduate programs as well. We require that you send transcripts from all the institutions that you have attended. Um, Brett can clarify uh, this a little bit better from his side. For a Michener program, we do need um, even college transcripts if you've gone to college. Um, and we, we, we like to get the most complete picture we can of your education and credentials. Um, and it tells us a lot of really great information about um, how well uh, you navigated your post-secondary education um, as a student previously before uh, coming to one of our programs here. Yeah, and for U of T it would be the same. We would require that you submit transcripts for all the university and college studies that you've completed or are currently enrolled in um, as part of your application. And you're just to confirm you are obligated to mm -hmm. identify um, all the institutions you've attended and provide all of those uh, transcripts. Um, this is for two very specific Michener programs, Med Lab Science and Respiratory Therapy. Um, these are the only two programs that you do actually need to submit your high school uh, transcripts for. Um, if you went to high school in Ontario, again, it's an electronic transfer of information from your high school directly um, to Michener. Um, there's no need to go into your old high school and request transcripts, although you can do so if you prefer that. Um, but um, the simplest and most economic way is to have them sent to us electronically. And uh, for U of T, we do not require that you submit transcripts, uh, if you high school transcripts, if you've applied to um, radiation therapy or radiological technology. If you are applying to nuclear medicine um, and you plan to satisfy the chemistry requirement with a grade 12 chemistry course, then we would require, obviously, that you submit those transcripts. Um, but if you've completed a university chemistry course, we could use that, that course to satisfy that requirement. And to confirm, also, uh, nuclear medicine is the only one of the three that does require chemistry. So um, all the other prerequisite courses are at the university level. So it would just be that one chemistry course for nuclear medicine that we would be able to look at at your uh, high school um, level. Three, applicant experience checklists are required for, again, three very specific Michener-only programs, cardiovascular perfusion, diagnostic cytology, and genetics technology. The only place that you can access the links to download these checklists are from Michener's website under those three specific program pages. Uh, if you have applied to one of those three programs and weren't um, aware that this was a requirement before this webinar tonight, I do encourage you to go to our website and download them immediately, um, and then you'll have lots of time to get them to us before the early February um, deadline. If you've applied to a Michener program um, for the last academic year, so if you applied for uh, 
admission into our fall 2017 programs, we will still have your complete file. By complete file, I mean whatever you submitted at the time of that application um, or whatever you had uploaded to Ontario Colleges, we still will be able to access those documents. So if you're repeating your application again this year, even if it's for different programs, we can still access those files and transcripts. We ask that um, all you need to submit is anything that might have changed between then and now that you need to make us aware of um, to complete our assessment. I'll let um, Brett address the MRS Previous yeah, so for MRS, and again, that would be radiation therapy, radiological technology, and nuclear medicine and molecular imaging technology. Um, we prefer that you resubmit your documents. Uh, if you're unable to do that, uh, please do contact our office. We do have them um, on file from previous sessions, but we do prefer to have a more recently issued transcript if that's, if that's possible. Um, one last thing to note, it probably doesn't apply to very many people, but I'd like to put it out there. Um, if you've been out of school entirely for eight years or more, so that would be back in 2009, um, and you haven't attended a high school or post-secondary institution since then, we would like to get a fuller picture of kind of what you've been up to, what you've achieved in those years through your work experience, or perhaps even volunteer experience. We would like you to um, submit a very fulsome and detailed resume to us to support your application. Um, and I think that that's all I need to say about that, unless you... No. Okay. No, that's, that's good. <laughs> okay, credential evaluations. Um, the Michener folder on the left, you can see we, we accept only two types of credential evaluations, um, WES or ICAS. Uh, let me just reiterate, these are only required for applicants who had their post-secondary education um, conducted outside of North America. Um, we do need you to submit one of these evaluations. We will not accept um, your original transcripts or grade uh, certificate examination marks directly from those countries, nor will we accept um, translated copies of those transcripts. We do require one of the two evaluations, um, and it kind of looks at your education um, knowing full well that every country has a very different education system, different grading scales, and in the end, the expert assessors will give us a full uh, assessment of how your education um, compares to a Canadian standard uh, of education. Yeah, and so for U of T, it's a bit different. Uh, U of T uh, conducts evaluations uh, independently, so our enrollment services team uh, will require that you submit um, original documents uh, for assessment. So if you have studied outside of, of, of North America or um, even outside of, well, let's just talk about outside North America sure. first. Um, we would ask that you upload to the system a copy of your, doc, uh, of your documents. So if you have a copy of your documents available, you can upload them directly to the applicant portal and that will allow us to begin the review of your transcripts to determine your eligibility. Um, if you are able to send the documents to us electronically, if your school uses Parchment or Naviance, which are two of the larger electronic transmission systems um, that are becoming more and more popular around the globe, you can send your electronic transcript directly to us and that will be sufficient as well. Then later, um, if you have submitted an unofficial transcript, so that would be a transcript that you've uploaded yourself from your own computer, um, if we are able to move your application forward and move forward with issuing an offer of admission, we would require that you submit a, um, an official copy of that uh, transcript directly to enrollment services. Um, really now the university, because it, the university is so large and uh, we get a lot of mail, a lot of people send mm -hmm. us a lot of stuff, uh, we really do prefer that all applicants send their documents in electronically whenever possible. Um, so uh, if you're in Ontario, again, your documents should come to us um, through the Ontario University Application Centre if you've previously attended an Ontario university. If you've attended a university outside of Ontario, um, we would prefer that you upload a copy, a digital copy of your transcripts directly to the application system. And again, we would then follow up with you when the original official transcripts are required. It just saves a lot of processing and delays um, 
in terms of us getting those documents from our mail room up into the system uh, because we do get a lot of mail. So that's something that's new for this year and that will hopefully allow us to get onto our valuations much quicker and get back to you and let you know uh, where you stand in terms of your eligibility for the program. Sounds much more efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, we briefly talked about English language assessment requirements. Um, this time I'm going to be kind and I'm going to let Brett go first. Oh, okay. Um, so you'll see here on your screen that there are two folders. On the U of T side, you'll see that I've just listed two. Now, U of T actually accepts about uh, 11 or 12 different uh, assessment um, types to satisfy the English facility requirement. Uh, but I've just listed the two here that are... Um, common with, with Michener, just for some clarity. So for TOEFL, we'd be looking for 22 in writing and a 100 uh, overall. And for IELTS, um, 6 per band with an overall score of no less than 6.5. Again, if you're um, looking for more information about all the options, we do encourage you to look at the website. If you go to medicalradiationsciences.ca and look at the English facility requirements section under the um, application procedures and requirements area, uh, you'll see that there is a link to the full list of English language um, assessments that uh, are accepted and the scores that are required for each. Okay. And I should just say as well, English language assessments are only required if your first language is not English and if you have uh, studied in a, in a language that um, is other than English. I think that describes it. Yes. Um, for the Mitchner folder, um, our TOEFL and IELTS scores are absolutely the same as U of T, so I'm not going to repeat what um, Brett went into there. Um, we do take two additional um, uh, test types, the MILA, which is actually a, a Mitchner uh, homegrown English language assessment, and it does kind of relate all of its test bands to the healthcare or practices of healthcare. Um, but the uh, proviso I need to tell you about that test is it cannot be done online. So if you do want to sign up for a MILA on the Michener website, you do have to present yourself in person to the Michener Institute uh, in downtown Toronto. So keep that in mind if you're not from uh, town or from outside the GTA. Um, the Pearson test um, is, you know, a very wide, wide uh, known international test, uh, 60 overall. Um, and sorry, the band overall score is 65 with nothing less than a 60 in each band. Um, we do also have a recency requirement for our English language assessments um, for two years. Um, how do we calculate the two years? Well, if your English language test is going to expire on December uh, 15th, which is tomorrow, and you haven't applied yet, that you would need to take another one. So it's tied to the date we receive your application. If you're going to, if you already applied to us on December the 1st um, and your, again, score, your, your test is going to expire on December the 15th, that's perfectly fine because we got your application 14 days before that. Oh. I think that's the best way I can explain yeah, okay. it um, to be fair to, to everyone. Um, and again, it's for anyone whose education was conducted in a non-English language dominant country. We do list a chart of those countries on Michener's website for your reference. Um, so if you studied, uh, you know, if you went to high school in Canada and went away abroad to go to Peru to do a post-secondary uh, education, you would not be required because you were first educated in uh, Canada. Um, and again, it's really usually specific to individual applicants. So we encourage you to email us if you have specific questions. We're not going to go into the specificities of people's um, educational backgrounds here tonight in the Q&A, um, but I do encourage you to email us if if you're still confused after this webinar. Yeah, and so for U of T, if you look at the full um, list of require or assessments that we accept, there's also some information there about who is re required to provide English facilities. So mm -hmm. uh, if you're uh, uncertain about that, you can review that information and see whether or not you fit into uh, the group that would require uh, that kind of documentation. And then once you've applied, if English facility documentation uh, is required, it will show on your portal as a required document. So that's another way that you can um, double check uh, regarding whether or not we're going to be looking for that from you. 
All right, and this is just a little reminder um, as we um, move through the pro the process. Now we're going to get closer to uh, uh, you know talking about the MMIs mm -hmm. and what comes sort of after we've received the the documents from you and we've completed our assessment. But I just wanted to remind uh, everyone that is um, looking to enter. Uh, either radiation therapy, radiological technology, or nuclear medicine, molecular imaging technology, that your SAF will come to you in, in, in January, and it will be due around the same time as your, your documents, a little bit earlier, so February the 9th. Um, I think the SAF takes, what, 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. to review and complete, so it's not a huge task, um, but if you've applied only to an MRS program, you'll receive a link to that information in late January, and it will be due February the 9th. If you've also applied to a Mitchner program, you likely will have already received that uh, notification and link to that, that application, and you may have already submitted the fee and the form, uh, in which case you would not need to do that again. Great. Um, one thing for MS applica MRS applicants um, to note is that you will be receiving communications both from my office at U of T and from Karen's office here at Michener. Uh, so it's important that you watch out for communications from, from both of us mm -hmm. and not just the, the U of T ones or great. the Michener ones. That's a great point yeah. to uh, remind people of. Okay, we'll move along. Uh, point five. Um, the question everybody wants to know is when our invitations to our MMI event are sent out. Uh, we do send them out with at least 10 business days before the event begins, so mid-April. Um, they are only sent by email. You will not have to uh, wait for mail. Um, it's too risky to send out important information like that by mail, so the only method um, you will receive an MMI invitation to is through the email address that you provided to us on your application when you applied through Ontario Colleges. Yeah, and so the MMI is a multiple mini interview. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about what that involves and the structure of it and what we're assessing um, in, uh, I think, the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, but the interviews are an important part of your application because they account for 40% of your final score your final application score if you've uh, applied to an MRS program, and I think it's 50 That's right. for the other programs at Michener. So an important part of your um, application and um, your sort of um, evaluation. Um, when the MMI invitations are sent out, uh, we will also be sending out um, other notifications. So if you haven't been selected for um, the MMIs, then you'd also be alerted at that time. Uh, the date for our MMI event this year is April 30th to May 4th. Uh, it is a Monday to a Friday. Um, there are five different days of interviews that are available to select from. Um, it does fill up quite quickly, so if you do receive an invitation, it is first come, first serve. Um, everyone uh, is required to attend that is invited if they would like to be considered for an offer of admission. Um, it cannot be waived. There are not any alternate dates other than the dates on the screen um, for us to schedule you to come in for. Um, so if you have any issues or questions about the dates um, and uh, you need to contact us um, specifically to uh, address these issues one-on-one -on -one with, with candidates that um, have questions about that. Um, after our MMI week wraps up, very quickly afterwards, we send out offers of admission uh, to top-ranked applicants. Um, Mid-May is usually um, the time of the month when you should be expecting them. Um, now, these are a little different from MMI invitations because we do send you an email copy, which will quite obviously reach you first, um, and then a formal um, letter copy by mail. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And we'll try to get those out as soon as we can. Uh, it's a busy time for us to uh, complete all of our calculations and mm -hmm. make our decisions and enter our decisions into our system and to get the letters printed, but we'll do our best to get them to you as soon as we can. So the multiple mini interview, this mm. is where we have a lot of questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the interview format, if you haven't done any research on it yet, um, is looking at the skills that go into making great healthcare providers that we can't uh, discern very easily from an academic transcript. Um, so communication skills, empathy, teamwork, um, 
uh, it's it's really a chance for you to talk to us about yourself um, and to promote yourself uh, in short um, seven minute interview rooms on a circuit of eight interviews. Um, so you'll be meeting eight different people throughout the course of your interview circuit and each individual uh, interviewer will be assigning a score to um, their interview with you. So as I said, they're short and structured. Some of them um, will be scenario based and you're asked to enter into a discussion with your interviewer. Um, other stations might um, involve you and another candidate who's attending the event working on um, uh, solutions to different scenarios together, uh, again, in, in the same room. Um, and at the end of it, the score is out of 56, and then we kind of convert that into a score out of 50 for Michener and 40 for um, MRS, and it's added to your academic score. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add anything? Uh, I'll just say that um, in terms of uh, interviews, I think this is a little bit more more fun it maybe is, than a, your typical interview. It also provides you a chance to make, you know, eight first impressions. So yes. if you're a little bit nervous the first round, um, you know, you've got seven more people to meet and to interact with. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to um, review the um, a description of the scenario or the activity that you're about to participate in before you enter the room. So you have about two minutes to... Um, you know, read over a description of what's about to take place so you can collect your thoughts, think mm -hmm. about your responses, and um, sort of have your, um, you know, have your plan in place when you, when you enter the room. Mm -hmm. I know often, um, for me at least, that's the kind of the most awkward part of an interview is when sure. someone asks you a question and you need a minute to kind of um, sort of wrap your head around what is, is being asked of you. So mm -hmm. it gives you that chance to collect your, your thoughts and prepare yourself before you enter. Um, as Karen was saying, some stations ask you to respond to um, scenarios. What if you were in this situation or um, it had to deal with a person that was um, under stress or having problems? Um, you might be interacting with an actor. You mm -hmm. might be working with other candidates. So there's lots of different types of um, activities and scenarios that you'll respond to. And um, I think there's even a break station, one rest station is, yes. on the loop. So you have a chance to, again, rest um, along the circuit as well. And the last thing I would add is that it's nothing you can study for. It's, it's knowledge that you can't get from a book. Um, it's really just about you and being yourself. Try and be you know, as relaxed as possible um, and to be uh, as engaging as you can when you're interacting with each individual interviewer. Yeah, yeah. The context of some of the scenarios might be a m medical type of situations, but we're not assessing your understanding of no. um, the field or the area you've applied to or anything that you can uh, study on. So um, it's really more about your personality, how you're a people person, how mm -hmm. you make decisions, how you interact, and and those kinds of things. Uh, there are resources available online. Many um, of them. Yep. Multiple mini interviews are used by a number of schools. I think it was invented by McMaster. It or was, developed by yes. McMaster and is used for medical admission, medical school admissions widely. So there is a bit of information out there on the web for you to take a look at. And also a good description uh, is available on the Michener website. Yes. So you can take a look at that. And um, as we said, you can't really study for it, but it's good to familiarize yourself with the structure uh, so that you're aware of um, sort of what will be happening the day you attend. Mm -hmm. um, and also to familiarize yourself with the kinds of attributes and skills that we're looking for. And again, those are listed on the Michener website. Great. Okay, some uh, important dates to um, kind of go over with you um, for the upcoming application process and uh, taking us through the whole process to July. Uh, deadline to apply again is February the 1st. Um, clearly, it's outlined there. The U of T and the Laurentian Radiation Therapy Programs, um, you do apply to uac.ontario.ca. Um, in late January, MRS applicants will receive an email from Michener providing access to the supplementary application form. Um, as Brett indicated earlier, if you've applied to Michener, you may have already received that by that time. Again, only one supplementary application form and fee is required. February the 9th is the deadline to support uh, to submit supporting documents um, and the deadline for the supplementary application fee application and the $45 fee. 
Do you want to do the rest? Yeah, so for um, MRS applicants, uh, we're looking at February 15th as a deadline to submit uh, transcripts and your English assessment uh, results if they're required. Uh, so again, um, if you're currently studying, we're going to want to receive uh, a transcript from you that shows everything up to and including the current semester right now, so that's fall, and uh, it also will need to indicate any courses that you're enrolled in for the winter semester. Um, and if you are planning on uh, completing any prerequisite courses um, that maybe you have not already done, um, you'll need to submit proof of registration in those courses by this deadline as well. Okay, so if you're missing the, the physics or a social science, uh, it's possible for you to still complete those courses and be considered for admission, but we would require that you have um, the proof of registration into us by the February 15th deadline and that the final results be submitted um, preferably by April 30th and no later than July 15th. Right. Uh, again, Mid-April is when the uh, MMI interview invitations go out. We purposely don't put a specific date because uh, it may vary, but it will never be later than 10 business days before the event starts. And the week of MMIs, please, you know, put a hold on this in your calendar, April 30th to May the 4th. Yeah. Offers of admission, notifications go out mid-May, um, so everyone will know where they stand by uh, that time. And then final transcripts for Michener are due July 13th, and a couple days later on July 15th for MRS applicants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Again, um, we've mentioned many times throughout this webinar that if you have a very specific um, concern or question after kind of listening to our brief presentation, um, you can feel free to reach out to us uh, at Michener, admissions at michener.ca, and for MRS admissions, mrs.admissions at utoronto.ca. Uh, yeah, we're happy to help you with whatever you may need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so now we're ready for some questions. Yeah. Uh, feel welcome, guys, to put your questions, type your questions into the... Question, question box. box, and we will get to them as quickly as we can. Okay. okay, so let's see. I think we have one question, um, which is asking about ac extracurricular activities that affect acceptances to certain programs, and ultrasound is used as a as an example. Um, I can I can tell you that any extracurricular activities that you may have, and I'm assuming you might be talking about some volunteer work here, um, are not factored into an application assessment um, to any Michener programs, especially uh, ultrasound. Um, if you're applying to perfusion genetics or cytology, there is an opportunity to list um, volunteer work um, that relates to healthcare for those three programs, but definitely not extracurricular activities. Okay. What is a multi-mini interview, and what is expected? Okay, so I think we uh, I think we covered that. Mm -hmm. um, Again, it's a circuit interview, so you go from station to station. Uh, every station is in its own room, mm -hmm. so um, you move from room to room. Before you enter the room, you have two minutes to review a summary of the scenario, activity, or... Um, mm, Discussion question? Yeah, that you'll be encountering. Uh, so you have a few minutes to collect your thoughts, and then you'll enter the room and have five minutes to either uh, complete the task or um, chat with the assessor about how you would respond to that the scenario that's been provided to you. Mm -hmm. um, there is no written component um, no. for the uh, multiple mini interviews, so it's all uh, verbal and, um, uh, yeah, I know for the PA program, for anybody out there that's also applying to the physician assistant program, we're not talking about that specifically tonight, but right. they also do use MMIs, and I believe for their system or their circuit, they do have a writing sample. So yes. there are different sort of components that can be plugged into the MMIs, but for the MMIs for Michener's full-time programs and mm -hmm. MRS, um, there won't be a writing uh, no. component to that. Okay, what is the admission rate for MRS programs? How many apply and get in by estimate, especially for radiological technology? 
Okay, so this varies a little bit by by year, so it's a little bit difficult for us to provide you with um, um, you know, a prediction of what this admission cycle will be like. Um, we have uh, about 40 seats in radiological technology. Um, I think last year, um, you know, for the full program, for full MRS, we admitted about 95 students, and we had about uh, a little 400, a little bit more than 400 applications. Um, so that gives you an idea of sort of how competitive it, it typically is. Um, we generally will invite two and a half or three people for every seat in the program to the MMI. Uh, the MMI is a really important um, part of your application because as a healthcare worker, you not only need to be academically bright, but you need to have people skills. You're going to be making decisions that are going to have impacts on, on people's health and their lives. So, um, you know, with the academic assessment, we can only learn so much about you, and so that's why we bring a good number of applicants through to the interview, um, because sometimes there's applicants that are very bright mm -hmm. academically, but maybe aren't uh, necessarily a good fit for working with, with patients or that kind of thing. So yep. um, that's why we, we use those two pieces. Um, yeah, they, They're so. very complementary to one another, um, and both of them are just as important um, in creating a great healthcare provider. Yeah. Um, okay, another question. Um, how long should we expect the MMIs to last? And actually, that's a great question because we didn't actually do the math. Oh. Um, there are eight interview stations worth uh, seven minutes, so there's an hour taken up just going around the interview circuit, but we also have uh, a very brief uh, orientation and a debrief we, we um, put you through at the beginning and the end. Um, so I would plan, you know, at least a solid two and a half hours um, to be with us to go through the entire process. Yeah, and I think there's usually two circuits in the morning and two in the afternoon. There Is are. That right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, there'd be uh, a number of options on each day, but again, they fill up quickly and first come, first serve for the actual slots. So right. uh, you'll want to make sure that you um, act on that quickly when you receive um, your, your invitation from us. Um, so the next question. Is it about the GPA? Yeah, does the GPA weigh a large percentage in the assessment process for acceptance? Yeah, so for um, MRS, we are looking for applicants that have a CGPA of at least 70%, 2.7 out of 4, or a B minus or higher. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we also do look at the grades earned in prerequisite courses. So we're going to be looking at your best biology, your best math, your best physics, and your best social science. Those are also factored into our overall calculation on the academic side. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, we also do look at your full academic history. So, um, you know, if your academic record shows that you've been a steady, consistent, consistently strong applicant, um, the admissions committee will, will notice that. And so um, we take that into consideration as well. So the GPA is very important. Um, oftentimes we get questions about the GPA cutoffs and um, uh, you know whether or not if you're slightly below the 2.7 whether or not you might still be considered and, and you may. It really depends on the makeup of mm -hmm. the the applica applicant pool and um, sort of the other strengths that you're presenting on your transcript as well. Um, it's possible that an applicant with a slightly lower GPA might become more competitive than an applicant with a higher GPA as a result of our assessment of the prerequisite courses and then uh, also later on at the interview stage. Mm -hmm. So um, GPA, yes, is important, but it's not the only thing that we're looking for on the academic side. Um, also related to GPA, someone is asking us if uh, an offer to the MMI is initially uh, based entirely on GPA. Um, yes, that's uh, how we do our first uh, ranking of all of our applicants. We do the academic um, assessment. Um, we're comparing one applicant to another um, by programs that they've applied to, um, and our interview um, spots are allocated to those that have the highest GPA. First. Okay, so yours is G more GPA yes. based. That's Ours has a little Michener program. Yeah. So a little bit different there in terms of how we make those first decisions on our on our applicants. Um, um so someone's asking a question um, specifically about respiratory therapy and the physics prerequisite. Mm -hmm. They're asking if they don't have a grade eleven or twelve physics, um, I'm guess they're asking um, 
would that hinder them getting in? Um, physics absolutely is a requirement for uh, the respiratory therapy program. If you don't have it in grade 11 U level or grade 12 U level um, and you're serious about um, taking this program next year, you still have time to go and um, enroll in a physics program in your local high school or your, your local night school um, under the district school board for where you live. Um, or you can take a university physics course, enroll in an online course. Um, as long as you send us the proof of enrollment in that course by uh, February 8th or 9th, sorry, um, that would still keep your application active for a potential provisional offer. Okay, I'm just going to tidy up a bit here. Sure. Okay. So that's that one. Yes. Do candidates who have completed a bachelor's degree have to have done it, huh? have done a bachelor of science, or can it, can you get in with an arts or business degree? Um, so I'm going to respond, um, assuming you're applying to MRS, maybe, I yeah, don't know if you want to respond answer. as well. Um, so for medical radiation sciences, again, that's radiation therapy, radiological technology, or nuclear medicine and molecular imaging technology. Um, we don't per really care uh, what your undergraduate studies have been in, in terms of what kind of a degree program you've, you've been involved in. We only require that you have the prerequisite courses. So um, many of our applicants will come from um, biological sciences or life sciences programs uh, just because they've already identified somewhere along the way that mm -hmm. they're interested in, you know, biology and health yes. and technology and those kinds of things. Um, and often students that are in those programs would have access to the biology, math, physics, and social science courses that were we're going to be looking for. But absolutely, if you've done an economics degree or a business degree, uh, that's fine. Um, you just need to uh, ensure that you have the prerequisites that we're looking for or that you enroll in any outstanding prerequisites. Again, providing proof of registration in those uh, courses no later than February the 15th. And uh, we would um, make our initial assessment based on the strength of the studies you've completed to date. And then, um, you know, if we're able to uh, provide you with an offer of admission, and if you had any prere prerequisite courses outstanding, then it would be a conditional offer um, requiring you to complete those courses and provide us with results at a certain level. Yep. And for you? For mentioner programs, um, the only instance where we accept a Bachelor of Arts um, is in kinesiology, and that would be for um, ultrasound or chiropathy. Oh, okay. Uh, leave it at that. Okay. Let's just see here. Oh, did you do one more? Okay. For second entry programs, are applicants with undergraduate degree more prioritized over those with only a year of university experience? So this is specifically an MRS yeah. question? Yeah, so um, no, they're not. Um, we look at every application holistically. So um, if you've done one year of university or if you're currently working on completing your first year of university, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be considered um, with the same priority as an applicant who has more university education. Um, we tend to have more applicants um, come into the program with degrees because we have more applicants that have degrees or have completed mm -hmm. um, you know, considerable post-secondary studies before they find out about the program or they apply to the program. So no, everyone's treated fairly um, and equally in Great. the process. And also, I had a question today um, on email about whether or not we give priority to applicants that are in Ontario or in Canada. And uh, again, everyone is uh, assessed equally, uh, no priority given to Ontario residents. Um, and that would be the same? Um, I'll clarify that for yeah. mentioner. Yeah. We are funded by the Ministry of Health for uh, the province of Ontario, so all of our first round offers do go to Ontario residents. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, which program is more competitive, med lab or RESP? Um, based on last year's application numbers, um, it happened to be med lab. I do know of recent years um, where respiratory therapy has had a higher number of applicants. I've graduated more than eight years. Do I have to uh, submit my resume in spite that it was not mentioned as a supporting document? Um, if yes, how can I do that? Yes, please. Um, please submit your resume if you've been out of school for eight years. Um, please just uh, email it as an attachment to admissions at michener.ca. 
And if you're applying to medical radiation sciences, we would not require that. Um, yeah. Okay. Is it possible to fast track the MRS degree? Um, complete the program in less than three years. Uh, it is not possible to fast track it. Uh, the program is uh, probably more structured than you might be used to in terms of an, an undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. um, the program's been designed um, to ensure that you that you receive all of your knowledge and training and clinical experience in a certain sequence, and um, so. Um, all the courses are required sort of in the sequence that we offer them. Um, it's not a program where you're going to get to choose to take a course in French literature or, mm -hmm. um, you know, Spanish. Um, the program is laid out for you and it's structured um, over the three-year program. So it is a eight-semester program and just so you know, you do study in the summers between year one and two and year two and three. So it's like a, a, a four-year program, but because you're studying in those summer months, um, you complete it in the three academic years. Mm -hmm. um, now, transfer credit. We had a question about this the other day. Um, for medical radiation sciences, I also just wanted to confirm that when you apply to the program, we're not actually transferring you, your first year courses into our program. When you start MRS, you're actually starting again a whole new program. So um, the, pro the courses that we require for admission are only assessed and looked at as part of our admissions process. So when you start MRS, you're starting again, um, earning your first credit, your first semester with us. Um, there are very limited opportunities for some transfer credit in our program. Throughout the program, we have three elective courses. Um, and it is possible, um, if you have studied more than one year of university before coming into the program, it is possible that you may have completed courses that we would be able to consider um, transfer credit for and provide you with exemptions for those three elective courses. Uh, but those those three elective courses are really interesting because they're in areas like MRI and mm -hmm. image informatics and things that um, will help you in your career and differentiate yourself in your career. So oftentimes applicants that have been approved for transfer credit will decide not to take it because, um, you know, they want to take the courses and get as much out of their education as possible. If transfer credit is awarded, you're not going to save any money, unfortunately. Uh, our fees are based on um, the the program unit rather than, mm -hmm. or the, the, the yearly academic fee rather than per credit, so um, the financial implications of receiving transfer credit are, um, well, there are none. <laughs> right. Yeah, and transfer credit for you guys, you have a little bit, right? We do, um, and for a lot of the very same reasons that uh, Brett um, explained, um, because these programs are accredited through the Ministry of Health and various regulatory boards, there are minimum requirements students have to meet as far as the number of courses they take in the program in order to be um, eligible to write their licensing exams when they graduate. Um, so it is entirely possible that you may get uh, a transfer in first semester for a very foundational type course, um, but again, it won't have any financial savings for you. Um, it will perhaps save you an hour and a half of lecture time in your first semester, um, but no sim substantial chunks or advanced standing yeah. is available. I guess sometimes having a reduced course load is yeah. Is nice too, Extra study right? Time or yeah, yeah. So that's that's the payoff if you can if you can get that uh, advanced standing or transfer credit. So someone's asking about taking an online uh, physics credit physics course for rest mm -hmm. and asking would it satisfy the requirement? Yes, it would, um, as long as your final grade in that course meets the minimum requirement re minimum required uh, grade that's posted on our website. Um, someone else is asking what is meant by activities on the Michener application. Um, I'm assuming you mean the OCAS application. If it's asking about activities, I think it probably means any type of related volunteer activities. Okay, someone has said, oh, the MRS seems to be very popular. Um, it is. Uh, admission is competitive, uh, but, um, you know, Certainly don't let that stop you from applying. I mean, the, the world is, is competitive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we would certainly encourage you to, uh, to apply. And again, we're looking at a number of different factors. So, um, 
Yeah, I don't know if you had a further question about that, but if you did, you're welcome to uh, restate it down in the in the questions box there, and we'll be happy to answer that for you. Are there scholarships or financial aid for accepted students? Where to find tuition fees and information for MRS? Okay, so I'll answer the MRS fees information first. So if you go to medicalradiationsciences.ca, and on the left-hand side, there will be a tab, I think it's called Finances. That's where you can see the finances for the current year. So for domestic students, it's um, $9,667, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. And then it's a, a bit more than that for uh, international applicants. And the fees that you are going to be assessed are based on your um, status, your immigration status or your citizenship status. Mm -hmm. um, it's not where you are located. So if you're a Canadian and you've been off studying around the world, uh, if you're a Canadian citizen or permanent resident or um, refugee or a number of, uh, of other kinds of classifications, you would uh, pay the domestic rates. Uh, if you are not a Canadian citizen and um, you have no formal immigration status with, uh, with Canada, then you would be assessed the international fees. Oh, I'm going all blurry. Someone okay. is asking... Um... Oh, we didn't answer the other part. Oh, Financial aid. Yes, there are over $70,000 available in uh, scholarships and bursaries um, every year. Um, we have a full listing of them on the Michener website. Um, and many uh, entrance scholarships for first-year students coming into um, one of our programs, um, which covers MRS or Michener only. So they're available to, to everyone. Yeah, and also for MRS students, uh, there is an MRS bursary, and it's a needs-based bursary. So... Um, uh, if you're in financial need, you can apply for that each year uh, in, during mm -hmm. when you're in the program. And um, those applications are due usually in early October, and the funds are dispersed before the end of uh, the fall semester. So that's available. There are also some other general uh, scholarships and awards that are available to all U of T students. So you can certainly check out the U of T website or send us an email, and we can uh, send you a link to that. A lot of them are quite specific. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, um, they're there and people get them. So yes. you might qualify for um, part of the larger group of um, scholarships that are available from U of T as well. Um, someone's... Oh, uh, sorry, one more thing. Oh. We didn't talk about OSAV. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, if you qualify, if you qualify for OSAP, you can spend your OSAP loans in either program, either our That's program, right. so either at Michener or at U of T. Um, so OSAP is the Ontario Student Assistance okay. Plan Program. And um, if you're living in another province or territory, uh, you would apply through your local jurisdiction right. uh, for um, that kind of funding. Um, someone's asking what the uh, course requirements are for ultrasound. Um, it's an undergraduate degree in science with a minimum GPA of 75, um, with one credit in anatomy, one credit in physiology, minimum grades uh, 70. Mm -hmm. Same person just wants to know how many seats are available in ultrasound, um, and there are 24 each year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so someone wants to know if students accepted into the MRS program are considered students at both U of T and Michener, and that is absolutely true. So you'll be studying on both campuses. You'll have access to all the facilities and services that U of T has to offer, um, our beautiful campus, uh, libraries, um, uh, health and wellness, dental plan, uh, student association, all of our intramurals, mm -hmm. varsity, all that stuff. Um, but you also have access to everything at Michener, and you'll be on both campuses. So uh, I think, you know, a lot of our students in the MRS program have come from larger university programs, and I think they really find um, Michener to be a very different kind of experience in that it's much smaller and much more focused. Um, you know, you're around other students that share the same interests as you, and so students really identify with Michener. Uh, you'll spend most of your time 
on the Michener campus because Michener is where uh, the labs and the simulation equipment and um, those mm -hmm. kinds of um, facilities are located. Um, but you'll be on both campuses. If you're not from Toronto um, and you're wondering kind of what the the sort of the logistics of traveling between the two would be like. Um, we're very close together. So um, one subway stop apart. Mm -hmm. um, Medicine at U of T is located on the southeastern kind of corner of the St. George campus. Um, so Queens Park Station, subway station. And then Michener is just a little bit south, just a little bit west of University Avenue mm -hmm. um, by all the research hospitals. So it's probably about a seven-minute walk uh, between the two campuses, so pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also say that um, residence is available on both campuses as well. So if you're living um, right now a uh, ways away and you're wondering where you'll stay when you're in Toronto, you can apply to uh, get a spot in one of the residences at U of T. Uh, but more commonly, uh, students will go into the Michener residences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which are which are very nice. They are. They're yeah. very much like graduate housing. Everyone has their um, own room. You don't share with anyone. You have your own bathroom. Um, the shared facilities are a living space and kitchen area. Yeah. So maybe a little more civilized than your typical university dorm. Absolutely. Um, and if you're coming from a distance, you get a bit of a priority, right? In you terms do. of getting uh, a seat. Or anyone not a bed. <laughs> whose uh, permanent address is a hundred kilometers. Uh, radius outside of Michener um, does get um, prioritized for consideration. Yeah, and I think the deadline for that to apply is July, July 1st. 1st, so don't have to worry about it right no. right now, but um, do keep it in mind. Um, Toronto is a busy place, so sometimes it's hard to, mm -hmm. to find a, a nice spot to live if, you, um, if you're looking to live downtown. I just want to follow up on a couple of questions um, about the previous uh, ultrasound question I just answered. Um, if you are a doctor uh, educated outside of North America, yes, you still need to meet the GPA scores for ultrasound. And um, the uh, maximum number of programs you can apply to at Michener at one time is three. All right. All right, so you guys have done really well with asking questions. Um, we have, well, I'm almost out of time, but oh, we'll answer yeah. We'll answer a few more. Um, so our next question is about volunteering. Well, mention activities on the o I think it's OCAS applications. Oh, so that. someone has entered activities other than volunteer on their application, and they're asking, should they cancel these activities? No, you can leave it on there. Um, it's only on there because it's a college application, and some college programs in the province um, require that. Um, but it's not doing any harm to keep it on there. And then what is 75% uh, equivalent to as a GPA? It's 3.0. Yeah. And someone's uh, asking about MRS programs in Quebec. Do you know of any equivalent MRS programs located in Montreal, Quebec? I don't know um, off the top of my head, but if you want to send an email, I will uh, ask my colleagues and they we may be able to help you with that. Uh, so send an email to mrs.admissions at utoronto.ca and you'll reach me and mm -hmm. then I can help you with that. Okay. Um, someone wants to know about they're a qualified doctor from another country and they want to know about GPA scores. Yes, the GPA scores are, require, uh, are required. And then the same person has got everyone. their yeah. degree assessed from West but doesn't have a GPA on it. Um, you have purchased the wrong uh, credential assessment. The one that we require has all of your courses and credits and course values on it. So um, if you would like to email us at admissions.ca, we can give you more information on that. Um, but what you need is a course-by-course -course evaluation from Wes. Um, the one you have is just a document-to-document -document evaluation. That's why it doesn't have a GPA on it. Um, we don't accept, unfortunately, the Wes uh, evaluation that you're, you currently have. Yeah, so I think we answered that how many programs can I apply to? So mm -hmm. it was three, right? For three at Michener, programs, yes. And then one MRS. So you could have like four. In total. You could have four in total if you apply to MRS and to, and to Michener. That's right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other, one, one more question? Is there one more question? Mm -hmm. 
Maybe there is not one no. more question. All right. Well, we hope you found that helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we look forward to assisting you moving forward. So feel welcome to keep in touch with us if you have questions. We're happy to answer your emails, yeah. uh, your phone calls. Um, if you want to drop by and meet with us, um, you can do that as well. Uh, just to confirm, we can't do transcript evaluations in person and confirm your eligibility, but we're happy to chat about the programs generally yes. and um, the careers and how the programs are structured and the application process and all of that. So if you have any questions, let us know and we'll do our best to provide you with whatever information you need. Um, okay. So thanks guys and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.